Ah, so we finally did it. Here we are, the first collaboration video with Jake from the Jake Brown Collection. All right. <laughs> Just to let you know, um, when I started this whole project, um, I was obviously going through various YouTube videos and finding various people that were, you know, far, far more knowledgeable than me. And um, I became a big fan of Jake. I started hassling the poor guy with uh, <laughs> untold <laughs> requests and chatting. Um, and then I'll let Jake explain, but. Here we are now, um, ready for the next part of our adventure, which is Monty's Men. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's going to be a big task ahead. Let's just say that it's been one already. So, uh, so yeah, just um, it's one step at a time, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, more than anything at the moment, what we're doing is I'm taking Jake's, um, I suppose, expertise of already doing World War Two reenacting and his knowledge of equipment, which is far greater than mine. And I'm kind of building off of him at the same point because it's new for you. Mm -hmm. We're working together and that tends to work good. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, what we're going to do is, uh, or this is the idea, is a um, some videos breaking down what we need to gather, get together, the quality uh, that we need to arrive at uh, for Monty's Men, which is the top uh, when it comes to World War II reenacting. Um, and then we could do some little segment videos maybe Definitely. Break it down, like you know, each each bit of the, of the kit we could um, look at into more detail. Mm -hmm. So, well, I don't know. What do you think? We could start off just go and basic run through one of us wearing some of this um, sexy yeah. kit. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay, and then <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to go through roughly the sort of level that Monty's men <coughs> expects. Probably this, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you, you start off while I pull up the kit regulations. Um, would you want start anyway, specifically? What Monty's Men is, I would think, because most oh. people are going to go... <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. Um, I think with Monty's Men, it's basically a, um, basically a trip. They sometimes do out the country, a lot of time in the country, uh, in the field, basically living the life, as it were, as a British soldier in 1944. Um, to an extent stent which I've never seen before really. Uh, is it almost company strength or something? Yeah, yeah, company, company strength um, with attachments from either armoured, um, Royal Medical Corps, etc. and, and um, uh, uh, Royal uh, Army Service Corps personnel as well. Um, it's, it's, it's insane to say the least. Um, well, size and so scale, far, the detail. Signed up over two hundred. Yeah, over two hundred. Yeah, about personnel, which is which is crazy. So company strength and added personnel, yeah. which is I've never seen that before, and all portraying either the same unit or attached units, and it's yeah. um, the, the detail is um, incredible. Really. So who are we portraying this year? So this year we were portraying uh, the King's Own Scottish Borders. Um, was originally um, the. Oh, uh, the. By the way, this is nineteen forty four iPad. <laughs> Made in Sheffield. Made in Sheffield. <laughs> um, we were originally, it was supposed to be um, Royal Scots, but it changed um, early, uh, early in the year, as far as, all, as far as I remember, to King and Scottish Borders. So I think we're doing uh, six Battalion, I think it is. Uh, we're doing six Battalion, the King's Own Scottish Borders. And we have here a very, so you can't see on the camera, but maybe we'll do some screenshots, very, very extensive list. And that's, and that's kit list one of many. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> gradually as the year goes on and as it gets closer to the event which is next should be next year around about July period if the zombies don't attack by then yeah exactly yeah if the uh, but this if, is, if the coup for zombies don't attack yeah, yeah I think more than anything it's based on quality so there's lots of advice on what you can use what you can't use it has to be historically correct mm. and or as close to as, as can close be. to as possible and there are a list of um, sources of equipment you can use and those that you can't use um, very, very extensive, and for me, I started off just buying stuff, not knowing I'm going to be replacing a lot of stuff, so I might have to sell some of the. And for someone who had a lot of stuff, I will be replacing a lot of stuff as well. <laughs> Which is why we're teaming up, and yeah. we're going to go through this. So, if that's unless you want to end, unless you've got anything else to say, I reckon we could. Um, yeah. Have a look. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Who's going to dress up first? Then? You. Uh, okay then. <laughs> And here's one we made earlier. Doesn't he look a splendid sight? <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, Kevin is in his uh, attire, which is an uh, example of an British infantryman um, of 1944 going on 45 period <coughs> in uh, Northwest Europe. So, starting from the top and working our way down, we'll go ahead. So, we have the Mark II steel helmet, 
um, which is being used alongside the Mark III and then later Mark IV, all the way into the very early 50s, still being used at this point. Um, this example has been scrimmed up, uh, so Hessian cover, netting, and then we'd scrim as well, put in between there to give it more concealment and break up the uh, outline of the helmet, etc. Um, how much strap's been put over just for ease of, ease of wearing whilst on the march. <coughs> uh, this one, uh, the uh, Hessian, that was all reproduction, the uh, Lions reproduction, but the shell itself is an original one. Going down, we have the uh, Soldier's Battle Dress. So we have the uh, austerity pattern battle dress blouse and trousers. So exposed buttons, unpleated pockets, except a slightly different cut to the earlier style. <coughs> uh, going from what's on the chest as, as well, we have the strap for the uh, respirator haversack and the uh, bandolier as well. So this is a reproduction bandolier, but there's uh, three or three in it rounds in there. And carries 50 rounds. This is for your personal use for your rifle, which is the uh, number four Mark I, uh, the Enfield. <coughs> there you go. On five round uh, strip clips, um, 50 rounds in total. Uh, so in the uh, ammunition pouch of the 37 pattern women, which is what the soldier carries, we have um, two brand magazines, like this, two of these. Um, Mills bombs, uh, two inch mortar bombs. <laughs> Still ticking. <laughs> <coughs> they never trusted me with this. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Don't even let them in the kitchen. <laughs> so, uh, within the equipment, etc., and then also carrying another bandolier of 50 rounds uh, to fill up the brain gun as well, uh, which is the squad uh, machine gun, or light machine gun. Uh, waist belts, all connects all together. Going down from there, obviously, we have the trousers, which are again all these austerity patterns, so exposed buttons, etc. Large back pocket, two side pockets, uh, back pocket as well, and then the uh, field dressing pocket for um, the shell dressing, uh, first aid field dressing, which is almost like a tube style uh, shape packet basically. Going down from there, we have the um, anklets. <laughs> uh, web anklets uh, with uh, either uh, webbing or sometimes leather tabs, and then the brass buckles, etc. And then the ammunition boots as well, the ammo boots. These are Soldier of Fortune reproductions. Um, personally, I don't think they're that bad. They're very good, actually. Um, there is going to be a video <coughs> on the differences between these reproductions and some originals. So, yeah. so yeah. look forward to that. I'd just like to turn to your side, sir. This side? Yeah, that's great, thank you. We see uh, the Soldier's Rifle, which is number four Mark, uh, Mark One Star. This one is a Long Branch made one. Yep, 1944, Long Branch with the Mark II, I think it's the Mark II. Stamps still sights. Yeah. 10 round box magazine, um, very, very good rifle. And this um, one shoots great. So do I. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> Move back a little, this side of the, cross, cross over a little bit. Okay. No, 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 it's down there, just move sideways a bit. That's fine. Um, so we have the canteen uh, on the gentleman's side. That's so you turn around to your back. <clears throat> we have the uh, haversack, uh, which is carrying the uh, soldier's rations, um, whatever is issued for the day, or something along that lines. Um, extra kits, so soft kits, so cat comforter, socks, towel, um, wash kit as well, um, and any shaving accoutrements and that, etc. And also over that is his uh, rain cape, which keeps everything instead of dry with the way it's set up. Um, great as a ground sheet as well when, say, uh, in a tent or something, etc. Attached to the uh, haversack is the uh, soldier's mug or tin mug, um, either brown or white with the blue rim, either or. And for easy access, basically. This was and wasn't done, but it's I do it um, because it makes it's much more easier to get to a cup of tea when you've stopped for a short while or you're in a slip trench, etc. It's much more easy to get to. Going down from there, we have the uh, soldier's. Um, uh, gas cake. Gas wasn't so much of a, a major threat going later on in the war, especially later on in 44, etc. But for the landings, etc., um, it was seen as a threat. That's why you're carrying the um, respirator as well. But the gas cape does double up as a very, very good rain cape as well. So using the tapes, it's attached to the belt. <clears throat> Early war, you'll see it on top of the haversack. 
and it'll be pulled the tapes and it'll drape down over the body. Below that, we have the uh, Soldiers and Treasure tool for the 37 pattern webbing. This is off, um, basically a hangover from the 08 webbing. Just this um, one's slightly slightly different. It's all as one package now. So the treasure tool head and uh, in the uh, canvas pocket. Um, sometimes the soldier may put, say, boot polish or dubbing, etc., in here just to fill out places and uh, for stuff to go, really. The helm is on top of that. This is a later style one. Um, seen very, very sometimes during the war, but this one has the attachment for um, the uh, number four spike bayonet for uh, mine detection, basically. <clears throat> Let's turn to your other side so we can see the habitat. Thank you very much. Arm up, please, sir. Thank you. Uh, we see the uh, the respirator bag. So this is the Mark II lightweight. Um, in here is all your accoutrements for your for your gas mask, so your, so your canister, your um, anti-gas ointment, and uh, gas goggles, etc., and all that sort of thing. Uh, next to that, we have the uh, spike bayonet. So this is the Mark II. Pick sticker. Um, for the number four rifle in its uh, frog. The little leather attachment is a uh, stopgap um, in the basically implication uh, to stop the uh, uh, stop the um, scabbard coming out the frog basically. Which is the cover. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's circumstantial, it's fine. Um, later, later modifications to uh, the frogs will be made um, to more better accompany the uh, the uh, bayonet, etc., because these frogs were originally made for the 1907 pound bayonet. Turn then round to your front now, sir. How much? So that basically shows the infantryman in his uh, all his equipment, etc. Paperwork wise would be kept in your two breast pockets, so your paybook, um, your wallet, um, maybe phrase book, or not necessarily meant to carry him, like say letters, etc., on your personal time. Yeah, so here I've got the um, Soldier's Guide to France book. And my paybook. Um, with this paybook, you normally have it in sort of an anti-gas uh, wallet, um, along with your so it's AB sixty four part one, and there's also a part two as well. Which you'll hang on, with. this says I haven't been paid. <sighs> we'll talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak to your own officer. <laughs> So you also carry your wallet, etc., as well. Um, any other accoutrements, maybe on you, cigarettes, etc., things like that. Oh no, I have been paid. It's okay. We can continue. <laughs> well, <whew. laughs> so yeah, that's basically what the infantry um, in the late period of the war in northern front in uh, North Russia will be wearing, basically. And also, yeah, as I said, with the entrenched tool, etc., all it it weighs a lot. It weighs. What would you say, sort of weight-wise, after maybe? A lot. <laughs> they were um, real men back then. Yeah, I'm definitely. gonna have to have a sit down after this. <laughs> That's a cup of tea. <laughs> oh no, he doesn't drink tea. Sorry. Did, did we do the shovel? Yeah, I yeah, believe we did. We did. Yeah, shovel. I believe we did. I think, I think we did. Yeah. No. If we didn't, we've got a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, with the, with the GS shovel, it's um, a much more effective way of digging into a fighting position. Um, so, unlike the trench that comes with the with well accompanies the whole 37 pound equipment. It's much more um, easier to dig slip trenches, um, foxholes, and um, any sort of earthwork really. Um, Having a poo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A very, very much more vital thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, along the, so, uh, the platoon or the section will be carrying several of these, or one each at least, and then possibly maybe one or two in say a platoon or something like that, will um, be carrying a um, GS pick as well, drum service pick as well. Um, to uh, give that bit more versatility to uh, say digging in a fire position. Sorry if we didn't mention that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the uh, infantryman of uh, 1944-45. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later. Bye.